here in chapter one are uh, three different pitfalls that we're going to try to avoid throughout the course, uh, help you in terms of thinking about uh, the processing. The first is what's called a violation of ceteris paribus, which is a Latin term that, that means other things constant. And the reason we talk about it here in economics is whenever you think of the economy, whenever you think of the individual decisions of uh, households and firms uh, and governments as well, there is a ton of stuff going on. I mean, the economy is one complicated thing to try to figure out. So, in fact, it's too complicated for, for Econ 102. It doesn't make any sense for us to sit here to try to come up with all the things that might happen. Instead, what we do is we try to isolate the effect of any one particular variable on the rest of the economy, holding other things constant. In other words, invoking ceteris paribus. So the idea here is kind of uh, right in the middle. What we want to do is we want to change one variable at a time uh, and then basically ask what would happen next. Um, and with that process in place, what we can do is we can come up with predictions and we can test our models and we can go about trying to arrive at conclusions that we can all agree as to what the answer might be. If we make it too complicated, the danger for us would be, especially in this class, there would be so many moving parts going on that it becomes easy for you know you to get sidetracked thinking that well this is important but that's not important this is important and that's not but that's important and all that stuff going on means it's really hard to arrive at a consensus we're going to try to arrive at a consensus um, to help you think about that uh, what I'd like you to do is think about this guy up here in the corner um, who's about to throw an airplane now a paper airplane is a model right of something that's big right something you can actually get on and fly. We're going to use the paper airplane model to help us hone in on this idea of ceteris paribus. So if you've ever wanted to fly a paper airplane in class, this is going to be your opportunity. For the next three minutes, I want you to build the best possible paper airplane you know how, and then we'll get back together at the end of three minutes, and we'll start testing how our model works. You're on the clock. Have fun. Okay, you guys have had uh, three minutes to get your airplane ready. And uh, what we want to do is we want to think about why it is that economists build models. And the answer is our job is too complicated if we don't simplify the economy and the decision making process. It's exactly the same idea why it is that a paper airplane can tell us something about the aerodynamics of flight. Um, and, and all these different paper airplanes um, that I was seeing as I walked around the room, well, you know, they, they have different flight characteristics. So for right now, I'm going to just sort of see which airplane uh, accomplishes certain tasks. So I'm going to ask everyone uh, on this side of the room to fly their planes first. And you guys get to hold on to yours over here. Um, and so uh, if you're on this side of the room, well, then your job is to hit this giant X. Okay? You ready? Set? Let's see what we got. Go! There, there is some uh, beauty to that. Okay. But this is, this is the one that came the closest. All right? Actually get right about here. That's great. That's fantastic. That's a... That's a nice looking model right there. Okay, that's a great model airplane. We're just going to set it aside right there. Um, and, and now we want to think about why it is that we use Ketteris paradox. Well, the answer is, if we're going to take a model, what we have to ask is, how does that model behave differently if something changes? It's not enough just to build an airplane and say it's the best. We've got to test it over and over again under different circumstances. So now for everybody over here, here's your task. We want to change something about your model. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to ask you to take, and I'm just taking, in this case, what would be the right-hand wing, and I'm going to take a little piece of the back of that wing, and I'm going to fold it up just like that. Everyone over here, just take the airplane and uh, bend up the right rear wing. And we don't have to be understand all of the physics behind this, but what do you guys think is going to happen if we put this little piece up here on the right-hand side? 
Is it going to go to the is it going to go to the right or the left? It's going to put some drag on this side. And so we've got a number of different conjectures, right? But we only changed one thing. So we're going to change the same thing for everybody. And now we're just going to see if we can observe that it, there's some consistent pattern. You guys already over here? OK, fantastic. You guys get to try the hit the X. There you go. Ready? Go for it. <laughs> so we put a little bit of drag on it, right? None of them, none of them made it to the board. That's okay. Were they going left or right? Yeah, they yeah, we couldn't even tell whether they were going left or right. Ooh, nice. Okay. So but, but here's the neat part about that. It's, it, the idea is very simple, right? Change one thing, test it, test it, test it over again until we all understand what the one change does. And it's very different from what we often try to tackle in real life. We say, well, there's a lot going on. Let me think about what's happened. So I'm going to just pull that back here for the moment. Now suppose <coughs> that we had that. I decided that we wanted to bend down the front of the airplane so it looks like that. And then I just want to take a chunk out of the uh, bottom of the plane. There it is. Okay, so this is my new plane. It's got the front bent down. It's got a chunk out of the middle. And it's got this little part up here in the back. If I fly that plane, and somehow miraculously it goes straight, or it goes left or right, can I assign which one of these three factors is the primary determinant? I don't know, right? So that's the problem here. I'm going to put it out there. And there it goes, okay? So it goes out there, but I don't really know why. And, and that's the, the neat part about Keter's Paris, is it gives us a way of all testing the same basic problem over and over again. And what we do in 102 is we try to invoke Keter's Paris almost all the time. And we try to keep it as simple as, as simple as possible by so saying, let's change one thing and let's make a prediction about what's going to happen. If you, as you get better in econ, I will relax the idea that we only change one variable at a time, and I might let you change two. That's it. That's as far as we're going to go. Do you want to change three or four or five things at a time? You've got to wait for intermediate microeconomics. If you want to change 20 or 30 things at a time, you can take advanced econometrics, where we use statistics to try to control all these different variables and isolate the effects of one on the other. There's a lot of cool stuff that can be done. In macro, you can even do what? You can build an entire model of the economy and then plug in all of this information to try to figure out what's going on. All of that is earned along the way once you have the basic intuition for economics. And that's why we think about models in this capacity. 